Hey, it's Jeff from Home Renovision here. Today I am parging my house, which is interesting because my house is really not a traditional house. It's not a poured foundation. So what I've got on one side is stack stone and somebody's done some cement work over the years and it's in really rough shape. And on the other side, I've got stack stone that I had to add a new ledger board to. I've got it all sealed up and we're gonna be adding cement board as a facade in order to cement and parge on top of. So there's gonna be two different approaches, a lot of information in here, and we're gonna show you why your parging falls and cracks off because no one in the market is doing it right. Stay tuned. Before I get started, I'm gonna cut my Deer Rock cement board and I'm gonna install it. And we're gonna show you the process for doing that because whether it's an exterior parging job or even in your shower, it's very similar. Now, I have a two by eight rim joist, two by 10. Sorry, and I'm going to be installing a nine inch cement board on that. The idea here is in this situation, I'm actually gonna excavate a little bit and then we're gonna build it up about 10 inches of new patio. So I'm just gonna bring this down to where the new patio stone will cover. I'll get a good look. All right, so we're gonna go nine inches. I'm just gonna measure down and this stuff here just scores and snaps, right? And I'm just gonna put my tape on my mark. Now I don't have to be exact here so I get the cheat. If I needed to be exact, then I would pull up my skill saw. I put on my cement fiber blade and then I would run it down. But in this environment, I can just stretch out my tape and almost use it like a ruler. And that is almost perfect. And then just like drywall. All right. And then we cut it from the backside. You'll notice the board itself is actually just cement. Portland cement, basically inside a wire mesh, I'm sorry, inside of a, a fiberglass mesh on each side, right? That's all there is to this stuff. And that's awesome. Now, when you're working with cement board, uh, how do you explain this? If you've ever seen old movies with Italian gangsters and they're putting people in cement, you'll know that it doesn't, cement doesn't kill them, it's the acidity that does. You can actually bury someone up to their neck and they'll burn alive just from the acidity in the concrete. So what you gotta do is you gotta buy the right screws. You can't be creative here. Make sure you buy something that's coated that says for cement board. <laughs> this special tape, I know it's white, it's not green or blue or something that you might have in your store, but make sure it says on it that it's alkali resistant, okay? In the package of the screws comes the special drill bit that you need. Awesome, looks like a T20. Now, one way you can remember when you're working with cement board, which side you go out. Always go with the company name facing you, all right? <laughs> At the end of the day, everything's about branding and they're gonna put their name on the side that they want you to see it when the job is done so that when you take a picture and send it to your friends, you can advertise for them for free. <laughs> now, if you remember when I built this house, I have the house wrap extended past the siding so that I could get my cement board up underneath it. Okay? And that's really what I'm looking for. Have a really nice continuity so that any water that builds up behind comes out over on top of it. We'll trim that back when we're done parging. Every 16 inches will be fine. And if you really like to attach screws, you can go top and bottom. This is all about making sure that it's a solid surface. And like with everything else, all of our materials from a water diversion system are hanging over top. Okay, so here we are. One last step before we can treat this like any other regular poured foundation. And that is, put on fiberglass mesh here. That's alkali resistant. Okay. Nice and simple. That'll bond the two pieces together and help resist cracking over time. Now, <clears throat> let's just talk about the product we're gonna use today. And it is a regular parging mix. There's nothing really all that special about it, except you have to understand that it is a Portland cement based product. It's a non-modified. And in the world of tile and cements and TV, everybody gets confused between modified and non-modified. And modified cements basically means with a, an acrylic latex kind of adhesive property and non-modified means good old fashioned cement. Now, parging mix is designed to go on a wet surface 
and retain moisture as long as possible in order to get as hard as possible. So there's two mistakes that happen in the industry on a regular basis. One, guys don't wet the substrate. They won't wet the cement board, they don't wet the foundation at all. They might do a quick sponge just to make it look good, but it has to be soaking wet and holding so much moisture that it's not drying in five or 10 minutes. That's the key. Second step is when they're all done, they're supposed to be covering everything up with plastic to create a sunroom, kind of like a sauna effect, so that any of the water that leaves the cement is trapped inside of a mini atmosphere, okay, so that the relative moisture of the air between the plastic and the cement is so high, the, the, the cement actually retains the moisture level while it's curing over a week. I know, it's crazy, but if you let that plastic sit there for three days, you're gonna have parging that's bonded to the wall and is twice as hard as the crap that you're finding on new homes today. Bottom line, if you call someone to parge your house, they're gonna just come in, get it done, get out, get paid, and next year when it all falls off, I guess you call the same guy again because that's just what we all do, right? <laughs> now, if you have a smooth surface, like a USC Duroc or a poured foundation, then you're fine. You soak it and you apply one coat. If it's really rough like this, you're gonna need two coats. So find something like this. You can really soak that down. You wanna be careful around flashing and metal and stuff like this, cause it's really sharp, okay? And you're gonna to wanna to do two coats. So we're gonna soak it down, get one coat on it, and then I'm gonna use this trowel the thin side to apply it, and then I'm gonna use the grooves to create little ridges so it holds the bond for the next coat even better. And then over here, same thing. Soak down that cement board. I know it seems counter counterintuitive to soak down something that's designed to keep your house dry. Trust me, you want your cement to bond, it's gotta be wet, not just damp. We'll give that a couple minutes, and then we'll soak it again. I'm gonna warn you. There's no such thing as too wet with cement board. Okay, so don't be shy. Make sure that's soaking wet. In order to mix your parging, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a mixing drill and a concrete bit, something that looks sort of like that. There are options, so don't be too worried about it if yours looks a little different. You're also gonna need a trowel. A great trowel for parging is actually not a cement trowel. It's one of these cheap little tile trowels, quarter by quarter inch. This gives you the ability to do a scratch coat and then a finish coat, right? It's everything in one. This is why you hold on to your tools when you're done a tile job. You can do your parging next. You're also gonna need a sponge. This is for later. A little corner tool like this for finishing up and detailing your corners. It's a little easier to work with than a big trowel, but if you only have one, get the big one. And then a wooden float. This is another option instead of the sponge. This is kind of like a personal thing. The wooden float's more traditional, but the sponge seems to be more popular. I'll leave it up to you if you wanna buy a new tool or reuse an old sponge. Ah. Now, this parging mix, it tells you how much mix goes with how much water. Ah, generally, this will do, um, I think it's at 40 square feet, right? Which is a fair amount if you think about it. That's one foot high for 40 feet of wall. It's a lot of parging. You can mix it in half a bag at a time. So it'd be one gallon of water for a whole bag or a half gallon of water for half a bag. I'm gonna go for the half bag. That feels about right. Remember, always add your cement to your water. That's a little bit loose. That's okay. It's easier to add the cement if you need it. Brilliant. This product operates a lot like tile cement in the fact that you got about an hour to work with, okay? And it, when it's mixed right, it sets up a little bit stiff like this, which is nice because then you can hold it on a trowel. Kind of a lot like mortar. So I guess I'll start back here with all this mess, okay? Uh, and you can just stick it in there. It kind of like patches up all of those big, uh, big holes. Okay to where I'm working. Fill it in with that grooved edge. OK, 
Okay. And that is how you'll set that up. So the next time you come by, you can finish it nice and smooth, okay? Yeah, you can go over spray foam with anything. The other thing you can do with a scratch coat is you can fill all these gaps and set that up so you can add mesh tape into that inside corner afterwards. Our scratch coat is done. Nothing to it. Now we're gonna switch it around and we'll do the, th the smooth side. Now, you can put this stuff on up to about three-eighths thick. Remember, the goal isn't to, it's not like drywall taping. You don't put it on and then take it off. You want to put it on, press it in, and leave it in place. Okay? You can see how much this kind of completes the look. Remember, I'm working on an 1880 farmhouse here, and I'm transferring this, transforming this into something that's very new and modern. And if you want to see how we installed the siding on this house, then click the link up here. But this is a complete restoration project. Now, my mix is starting to get just a little bit dry. Ah, we'll fix that. Just a little bit of water, and we're gonna work that into the mix now. You also wanna keep wetting your cement as you go. Right over the tape. Really all we're doing is trying to just get rid of all the all the warps and the bumps. Okay. The goal is to get it to 3 8 thick and then smooth it out. We can use the trowel to get rid of the bumps. Hmm. <laughs> This wood float looks really nice when you got lots of room. Sponge works amazing in those tight spaces. It just adds a really nice little texture to it. All right. I have about another 120 feet to do. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just call my son Matt out here to finish off this work. He's young and he's got a strong back and he'll love doing this. But really all we have to do now is just show you how to set up for overnight. Okay. Okay. So this is Super 6 plastic, and if you want, you can cut it down to fit. You can even staple it to a piece of wood, and you can create a little trellis and lay it over top. I just usually stick mine in the corner, grab a couple of pails as I go, and drop them in place so that it holds everything nice and tight. What it does is it gets rid of the wind, the direct sun, and it helps to trap the moisture. And as long as you're doing that, you're gonna have a nice strong bond and you won't have any cracking down the road. Remember, if you're doing parging your house, make sure it's wet, make sure you're comfortable, make sure you keep your, your, your mix really easy to work with or it's getting too dry, add a little more water. Water is your friend here, not your enemy. And most things in construction, we look at water like our enemy, when you're parging, it's your friend. Don't be afraid to get soaking wet and have a lot of fun doing it. And for anybody who's curious as to why the door is turning brown, <laughs> we've got a special project video where we actually cut the light into the door and saved a ton of money making a custom brand new front entrance. We can show that video right here. Click the link if you're interested, because if you can parge and you can do siding and you can change your doors, well, you can fix up the whole outside of your house, which is your biggest return investment.